Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to share with you what I think are 10 great purchases that you can make as a people photographer that are less than $100. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you a list of consumables as well that are great purchases too. I have been a photographer for more than 20 years. I started off as a photojournalist, and then I transitioned into being a commercial photographer. And somewhere there in the middle, I shot some weddings as well. So I've got a fair amount of experience working both uh, on location and also in a studio. And so the things that I'm gonna tell you about today are things that you can use in both locations. They might be a little studio leaning, but I think they'll be great choices uh, for you, regardless of whether or not you work from your home studio or you work in a commercial studio or you work on location doing those weddings or business headshots. I'm going to link to all of the gear that I'm discussing down here in the description. So if you could please click on those links, I would really appreciate it because that will help support me as I make more videos like this. And it will also be a quick way for you to find that gear so you can purchase it and use it uh, in your work. So let's go ahead and talk about the very first item, and that is a Kupo offset arm. Now, every time that I've taught a workshop and I've taken this out, I'm almost certain that at least one person there has purchased one of them. This is a great piece of equipment that will allow you to get your light about a foot or so, I think it's 14 inches, let's call that 35 centimeters, away from the light stand. This will allow you to get a beauty dish in the beauty dish position right over the camera and allow you to shoot under it. I use this all the time for my main light when shooting headshots, and it's really an indispensable piece of gear that I think everyone should own. The next thing I wanna talk about are packs of color gels. These could be color correction gels, they could be color effects gels, but if you buy a set of them, probably would say both, but let's say you just buy the color effects gels, you'll be able to get that cool gelled look in a lot of photos. And eventually a client is going to come to you and ask you uh, to create images like that for them. And you'll already have the gels on hand. So they will be a great purchase. Now, about 10 to 15 years ago, I bought a set of director chairs. I bought them because I wanted to use them as props in a group photo shoot. Little did I know that I would end up using these chairs over the years for all sorts of things. I would take it to events that I was shooting videos of and I would use it as my chair as I sat there manning a camera or two at a tripod. I also would take it with me on commercial shoots where I was photographing models all day and it would be my seat. Of course, I've used this also as a prop in pictures, and I've used it at my studio when I've had a bunch of models come in and a bunch of crew members come in for a big commercial shoot and needed some extra furniture. So all in all, these are going to be a great purchase for you that you'll be able to use for years to come, and maybe you'll even take them out to watch the fireworks with your family someday. So who knows what you'll use them for, but it's definitely something that I don't think you'll regret buying. The next thing that you could purchase would be a mirror. Now, if you work on location, this could be a handheld mirror that you could put in your lighting case. I have one in mine, or it could be a full length mirror that you could put on the wall. This is going to help you out over the years because it will prevent your customers from stepping onto the set and looking a little out of sorts, if you will. The other thing is, if you don't have one, they're gonna ask you, where is the mirror? Because they want to make a final check usually before they step in front of the camera. And so it definitely is something that you could have in your studio or if you're a location photographer in your lighting case that will let you do more finished work and help your customers feel better on set. The next thing I want to talk about is a category of equipment and it's just sort of grip equipment. If you buy grip heads and super clamps and clips, and double-ended stud and, and that sort of thing and A clamps and just have those in a bin in your studio, you never know when you're going to need to mount a light 
to a pipe or the side of a light stand, or maybe you need to hang a mirror from something or a monitor from something or hold a flag. This type of gear is indispensable in the studio. You can use it also for holding backdrops in place, uh, holding a bounce reflector, uh, holding a reflector in place. It's sort of like the Swiss army knife of, of photography gear. And just having a bin of assorted clips and super clamps and grip heads and studs and A clamps is going to be indispensable over the course of your career. Before we get to the next item, I just wanted to take a moment to tell you about my lighting handbooks. In my lighting handbooks, you'll be able to see how I created over 20 different shots in each handbook. And I'll show you where the lights are positioned, what I was thinking in general, and then I'll share with you how bright each one of the lights are relative to each other. I've got a lighting handbook just for one light setup. So if you're just starting out, I've got one all about black and white portraits, if that's something that you're interested in. And of course, I've got one about multiple light setups. That one is my most popular one. So for more information and to get your copy today of this digital download, just go to johngress.com slash lighting handbooks. Another great thing that you could buy is a gray card because there will always be times when you're shooting on location or using a new modifier and you're going to be unsure about the color balance that you're getting at that particular time. And using a gray card will either let you set a reliable custom white balance on set or allow you to take a photo of the gray card and then set it in post. This has been something that I've had in my bag for a number of years. When I was a photojournalist back in the day, I would use it to set the white balance at basketball games. And then over time, I ended up using it when I was shooting weddings to get the right white balance. And now I will use it on set sometimes just to get sort of a forensic thing that I can put into the shot to make sure that when I'm processing, processing the photos in post that I'm getting accuracy. And if you want to spend a little bit more than $100, you could get this color checker from Calibrite, and that will help you be even more sure that you're getting the right color on set, and it will also give you a gray card built into it. And then you could use Calibrite's software to set a profile in some critical situations, and that will allow you to get really accurate color and deliver great images to your clients. But overall, having a gray card, while it seems like something stupid and basic probably to many of you, is something that if you purchase it, I swear you won't regret purchasing it over the course of your career because it will come in handy and crucial at some point. Another great thing to buy is an Apple box. You can use an Apple box if you stain it as a prop, but you can also use it to sit on while you're doing your shoots. You could take groups of Apple boxes together and build a platform, or you could use them to build a desk, uh, that sort of thing. They really are indispensable in the studio. And if you own one of them, you'll be able to use it all the time. Maybe as a stepladder, maybe as a seat, maybe as a stool for your clients, maybe as a stool for you. The lists will go on and on, even though it just seems so basic. It's a great piece of gear to own. And in line with that is a folding table. What matters is that there's going to be times where a client is going to come to a headshot shoot and they're going to have all sorts of clothes and accessories they're, they're going to want to lay out. Maybe you're going to end up working with a makeup artist or a hairstylist at some point that has a huge amount of makeup that they want to lay out in order to display. And this is going to facilitate that. Maybe you're going to have a shoot where you serve lunch to people and you can use the table for that as well. Or maybe you just need a table that you can set up somewhere to put your computer on while you're tethering, and this will get you through it. And having something like this that folds up and is portable is gonna be a great thing that you can use over the course of your career. The next thing I wanna talk about are sandbags. Having a 15 or 25 pound sandbag, let me do the metric in my head really quick. Is that seven kilograms or 10 kilograms? Sure, let's go with that. Um, a seven or 10 kilogram sandbag is going to be a great thing for you to have around the studio because you can use these to secure your stands when you're booming a light, or you can use them to secure a background when you're photographing children that are running around. What I mean by that 
is when you put a backdrop up between two stands and you've got it hanging there and swept out into the room, if you don't do something to ensure that it can't fall over, then it might do that. And that could very easily hurt a child or hurt an adult or give you a bunch of extra work that you have to do. So putting a sandbag on each side of there could be a great step. Having a very large octobox on a C stand is also something that would normally warrant having a sandbag. And if you're going to boom anything, you're definitely going to need one. And if you're going to work outside in the wind, then it's definitely a great choice. Not having one and not doing things correctly is what has led to me having two lights fall over during the course of my career. So don't be like me. Just make sure that you're being safe and a sandbag is a great way to do it. The last thing that I want to talk about today is a five in one reflector. And you'll be able to use this throughout your career to fill in the shadows on set and on location. You'll be able to use the silver side when you need a little extra bounce, the gold side for extra warmth, and the white side when you want just the right amount of fill. Now for our bonus section, if you will. I asked on my Instagram account what people thought was indispensable gear for their studio, and I got a number of responses. And amongst them was coffee, gray paper, gaffer tape, a lint roller, 20 by 30 inch foam boards, and a basic makeup kit. In fact, I have a video that's all about male model makeup basics, and you can watch that by clicking on this link up here. If you guys could please let me know in the description if I've missed anything, because I'm sure your tips will come in handy for the other photographers watching this video. Thank you so much for your time. If you could please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.